All right, so this kicks off episode one of Delving Into Devs, uh, where we're talking about the latest project from Alex Garland. We're probably going to touch, touch on um, some of his previous stuff, too, because there are points of overlap um, and uh, points of interest that uh, he definitely touches upon in Ex Machina, I'd say probably the heaviest, but even in Annihilation, you'll see it. Um, and I couldn't help but uh, think there was some kind of uh, uh, mirroring also in Sunshine as well, uh, which he was a, a writer on. Um, yeah. And uh, so uh, I guess we can start with how the show starts out at first. Um, yeah, and I did, you know, just speaking to Alex Garland, um, mm -hmm. this, and this to me is really rare. This creator to me is batting a thousand. I don't think he's missed the mark once. Um, he wrote, he wrote the beach adaptation mm -hmm. uh, that was with DiCaprio. Twenty eight days later, um, you know, Ex Machina, uh, Annihilation, this series. Mm -hmm. Like the guy, just I don't feel like he's missed the mark one time. Mm -hmm. And that's you know, so he's just one of those whatever he does i'm i'm gonna be watching it there's yeah. there's no doubt yeah and uh you know i i don't really track people that much uh so when you started mentioning the projects he's on i'm like yeah that's when i like that's when i like that's when i like uh and he even did dread which uh you didn't oh, mention right. before and I'm like i fucking loved that movie um you know i kind of kick myself for not seeing it in theaters because it had like a 3d element to it i know i know and, i did too when we saw I, it finally i was just yeah. like holy shit this yeah is this would have been so bomb to watch in 3d yeah yeah, yeah um, the guy is just he's a phenomenal writer and then you add to that his uh talent uh with creating the visual fused with the sound the the music yes, sound yes. elements he puts in it's just so unique Mm -hmm. Holy shit! This guy is something else. So, um, so we kind of start out the opening shot. From what I remember, I, I did take one note off of it, um, but it's kind of like establishing shots, and we're in the forest that leads to the devs building, um, and there's kind of a, a out of place um, like split screen or, or a composite, I guess, of like the Amaya figure that you'll see like on the buses um, oh, right. and stuff like that that just like takes up the center of the screen. Um, you know, for me, that was kind of like, I mean, maybe it was supposed to sync up to the music uh, because the sound design of this whole thing is like mostly silence. And then when it comes in, like it's meant to really be there for effect, really just like totally yeah. blast you. Yeah. Uh, so. True. So this and opening I, thing. I, I believe the opening sequence uh, is like Gregorian chants with like a, like, that, with yeah. like a jazzy with like a jazz inspired saxophone yeah, yeah, layered yeah. over it. And it's really yeah. but like it's dissonant, whoa. you know. Yeah. Oh man, it's it, it creates a It'll really... definitely wake you the fuck up if you yeah. thought you were just gonna like have a nice easy intro. Um but we see uh, a shot of uh, Forrest, um, the uh, mogul, the tech mogul who actually owns his company, uh, standing in the forest uh, pathway that leads to the Dove's building. Now, I didn't do quite a one-for-one -one back and forth to double-check this, but I believe he's standing in the exact spot he will be standing in later. And it's almost, um, to me, like it, it's this is the start. Well, it happens from before, but we're seeing in terms of the show, this is the first placement where we, we don't know it, but I believe this is kind of the spot where we see his deterministic worldview, his, his uh, compulsion right. to believe everything is going to, is on tram lines, that there's nothing we can do to change, um, you know, the shape of the future. Um, and so he's basically there uh, what and what is going to be one of the major uh, plot points of this whole episode? Yeah, uh, where he confronts uh, Sergey yeah. after he leaves the devs building, and I, I, I'm, I would be willing to bet it's the exact same spot uh, that he later appears in. 
Um, but this is just all establishing shot kind of stuff. Um, so there's no idea for you as the viewer to know that. Uh, and it's kind of something where, again, a lot of information gets thrown at you up front. Yeah. All that's going to matter, uh, e even by the final episode, it's all going to matter uh, when you view it all. Yeah. And it's worth noting, too, that this is one of those. It's one of those things that uh, your first experience, you can only have that once. Right. When right. you watch it again, it will be a completely different. You'll be looking at it from such a different angle. It's not the same thing the second mm -hmm. time. And um, yeah, by the way, spoilers are the way on this talk. Uh, <laughs> you might be spoiled for this episode uh, if you haven't seen it already, oh, yeah. but uh, we definitely recommend that you try to watch as much as the series as you can uh, before you kind of launch into these. Uh, I guess that should have been the, the warning at the front. <laughs> Probably. I mean, I think, uh, you know, calling the calling it delving into devs, I, people have yeah. to understand that we're, we're really going in depth into this series and breaking it down. So if you haven't watched it, highly recommend that you did, you know, binge watch this thing. It's on Hulu. Um, you know, we'll be doing this again uh, next Wednesday. So uh, mm -hmm. yeah, you got to watch this thing. And I, um, and oddly enough, I don't think it's, I don't think it was watched by that many people. Well, it is uh, FX on Hulu. I'm not sure like how wildly popular that is as far as a distribution thing, but I, I would say this is a really good show for them to have, like as far as a um, yeah a way to sell the 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 whole. The Texas has been knocking it out of the park, man. Like with experimental uh, entertainment and storytelling, like uh, mm -hmm. Legion too was another one on FX, which is like a you know X Men uh, thing. But it doesn't, it, you know, it doesn't read that way, and it's so compelling. Like, FX is really probably one of the few channels that is really pushing the envelope with the experimentation. Hmm. I haven't seen Legion, but I'll, I'll look into that. Oh God, um, dude, you'll fucking love it. All right. Uh, so, is there anything from the opening uh, besides that? Uh, we see one of my favorite characters in the whole thing. Uh, the homeless guy, like doing yeah. like <laughs> Zen stretches and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what, what for you? Is there anything else? That I stood think out wasn't there a, wasn't there a shot of, uh, and I don't think it was the homeless. It was just another homeless person, I believe. Yes, yeah, so yelling, were kind of yelling like, to this they guy, were like yelling at God, maybe. Yeah, yeah, he was drinking and yelling at God. It seemed like, yeah, right. Um, and there's there's going to be kind of play uh, going throughout the whole thing about godlike imagery, godlike messianic stances, which is something that. Um, he played with uh, Garland played with uh, with Ex Machina where there's the uh, the genius guy I forget who he what his name is but um, essentially he's kind of creating new life with AI um, and it seems almost as much uh, uh, weight on him as it is you know like this grand uh, um, new world that he's creating by doing that uh, yeah yeah. But they, they don't really touch on it, I think, in the, quite the same way on this one. Uh, this is this is somebody who is reaching to be, be God and kind of has a quality of having attained that, but it's more or less to try to um, Very really understand goal. his own past. Yeah, you know, and, and, and know um, completely that uh, there's nothing he could do to change it, but he can perhaps revive yes. what he lost. Right. Um, so, um, it's a, it's an interesting thing to have, and it's not necessarily uh, so explicit either. Uh, but yeah, th th there is that uh, yelling at to the sky, and I can't help but notice. I think from the entire time, uh, and I, I couldn't note like it was all over the place when I rewatched it. Every kind of establishing shot. Uh, and even when they're doing scenes with uh, the, the characters, they do this thing where it's like the depth of field and the soft focus yes. at the edges. And it makes me think like I'm looking like at a miniature, like, and um, I think it, it's supposed to kind of give the viewer too like a sense of being like in a God, like playing like you're, it's a lot of over the city, over, um, the trees, like a lot of um, aerial views looking down. 
And not only does it look small, but it looks like it's a miniaturized version that you could hold like in your hands. Sure, sure. Um, because like if, if you had something near sight, like you're not going to focus on what's behind it or what's in front of it. Uh, whereas if it was off at a distance, it would be like everything was in focus. I think it's a brilliant way um, to kind of showcase what I what I have to believe is like later on they finally perfect this simulation software where they can basically peer into what is like uh, potentially multiverses of stuff, but um, they can zoom in, zoom out. They can, you know. Well, it's speaking to the soft focus um, technique where mm -hmm. initially you might, like, I think the first time we're introduced to the main character, Lily, I think it's, uh, mm -hmm. he uses that technique. She's looking out a window or something. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. And Absolutely. she's out of focus. But what it reminds, I think it's actually um, a mirroring of, what the uh, quantum computer does when it, and this is jumping ahead a little, but when it's when it's trying to when it starts to stabilize an image, right? When it yes, starts, yes, it's exactly, very out of exactly. focus, and then it comes into focus, right? Or it can focus uh, on one thing, but the rest of the details are a little like blurry. And yeah, stuff, just like the, the thought. The but it, I, I do think that that's it's kind of uh, it's playing around with that and connecting those things. Right, um, that there is no difference between what the quantum computer is doing and reality itself. They're the same thing. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So it's uh, this the amount of thought and care put into this entire series, and it's just a trademark of Alex Garland, really. Um, that's just what he does. Every moment is important to him. All right. So the, I, I think if you share my screen at this yeah. point, um, this is, you know, I think in the sequence of the show, this is uh, what kind of comes into it. And of course, we, you can't talk about this series without talking about the statue of mm -hmm. Amaya. Yeah. Uh, which is. <laughs> It's pretty out there. Uh, <laughs> which is his daughter, you know, Forrest's daughter. He's the guy, you know, the, mm -hmm. the uh, leader of this company um, that is That's running named devs. after her. Yeah, yes. it's named after his own daughter, uh, Amaya. Yeah. Um, and it's and just I, so, it's like, I think it's, you know, maybe for him, it's beautiful, but I don't even think so. I, I mean, it's oppressive. It's not like her expression is even... It isn't a joyful expression, right? Um, it's kind of a position. Mona Lisa like thing, right? Like you don't <laughs> yeah. quite know what it's there, like what's on that face, uh, but you definitely know, like in terms of like this guy's mission uh, with what he's doing, and he'll, he'll even talk about it in the show. Uh, you know, uh, the security guys like you used to be about making money, and he's like, yeah, well, not anymore. Um, like he had a. a entire shift in why he was doing what he was doing which is yeah uh, you find out that he has lost his um wife and child in an accident and he is doing anything he can to bring them back and so this um quantum computer which can uh peer into the past uh as well as predict part of the future is what he's using to get that that lens that uh, window back into the life of his daughter um yeah and, and it just it always it struck me right away just how um oppressive and intimidating and like this statue is at this company and right it, it's and just it's, uh it seems man. more out of place than anything too like uh you know all these ideas floating around as like outlandish as they might seem or um out of reach, you know, like a quantum computer recreating the whole world uh, and being able to simulate it and also predict it almost to a T. And this statue is like one of those, this statue seems more jarring than that idea. <laughs> like it's just like yeah. an overly absurd visual element in the whole thing. And uh, I was talking to you before the show as we were looking at it and it's just like, it, it does seem oppressive. It does just seem like, you know, like I'm almost walking into a cult uh, or something. Like as I walk that's, up, there's that's like perfect, dude. I don't yeah. know why I didn't. It it is. It's very it's very cult like. And yeah, uh, the, this it, monument of 
this girl. I mean, it's the name of the tech company. It's uh, this giant looming presence over the whole thing that is just staring down, you know, the offices of everybody. And it's, you know, in a way, just like, I guess, like the um, hiding in plain sight metaphor, uh, visual metaphor of just like the whole drive of this company yeah. and this guy is this girl. Exactly. It's this moment in his life. And it, you know, it's, it is, it creates everything that happens is because of it. Uh, it's ever present in every, everyone that works here, everyone that interacts with this company and this man, it knows it, you know, and it's like, I don't know. It's so, it's so bizarre. And I, I, this idea of creating this statue to this scale, I think right. it was just brilliant. Right. Uh, and it's absolutely. even like, I guess, part of the campus is like it overshadows this like amphitheater that right. they have there. And I'm just kind of like, man, I, I, I try to think of more um, like metaphor that that would have brought, you know, like you would think that's where you're going to hold lectures. That's where you're like going to be doing presentations. It seems to it's supposed to be like a wait for people to pull away and do whatever uh, at this place. Um, but you can't escape her. You can't. Ever right, exactly. It. It's standing right over you. Yeah, the whole time. Um, yeah. yeah. And uh, so I, I guess that's probably a, for right now, as far as I would want to get into sort of that. And the, uh, the story starts out. Yeah, we, we uh, wake up with Lily and Sergey. Um, and without knowing anything more, uh, I would believe that Sergey would almost seemingly you'd think might be a protagonist throughout the whole show. Like he would, you know, I, I, I don't know uh, how well, well established that actor is, but I, I certainly got the feeling from the start of it that like uh, this was going to be a guy, you know, around for at least half the show or something. Um, but we um, are quickly disposed of Sir Kay in, in the show. Uh, which speaks to the chances it takes, but it, it's just kind of like they both start up. They're both going into work. Um, nothing really stood out too much to me other than the fact that I will say like the first five minutes or so of this whole thing will play into uh, things later on in the, in the series. Um, but it, it didn't seem like there was great uh, meaning I think it necessarily anything there. We just see that even in the city, like uh, the Maya is kind of like looming over it, like because there's this like giant like display, uh, animated display of her like blowing the dandelion seeds oh, right. and stuff like that. Um, but they essentially go into work, and we know that he has a big presentation. We know that she works, um, I guess, with the like defensive. Um, Web right, defense, uh, uh, the, like encryption and shit. Yeah, yeah, and uh, they they talk about it before they 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 go into work and stuff, and um, then they kind of part ways, and we see that he is doing a predictive model of a nematode, and from a point that they're um, basically uh, scanning it, they can project about thirty seconds into the future with 99% accuracy exactly what the nematode would do. And they even do like a projection 10 seconds into the future countdown. And then it syncs up exactly with that. But after the 30 seconds, it just completely goes to shit. Um, Correct. Very fast. And, and of course, at this point in the show, you don't know, nobody has, and I love this, uh, how quickly and efficiently Garland was able to create this desire in you to know what the what they do at devs. Like, what, dev what are did, they yeah. doing at devs? Um, what is their because nobody that works for the company, unless you are uh, promoted or invited to go into the actual devs building, nobody knows what they do there. Nobody. So it really exactly. create and of course what he's doing there by predicting the simple organisms um, movements uh, is a, of course a foreshadow of what devs is all about mm -hmm. right 
And, so and it's great. you have no indication. Uh, I didn't watch any trailers or anything, so I had no idea really what the show was about. So and also while this is going on, there's sort of a discussion uh, that primes the whole discussion to come um, because uh, it becomes a thing of uh, why don't, why do you think after 30 seconds you can't handle this yeah, uh, simulation? Right. Oh, well, either we need way more computational power than we have. There's just, just too many variables and we need way more computing power to do that. And then he offers up the other explanation that uh, there are multiverses in the parallel universe. The simulation continues and it still matches up, but it's not this one. Right. And in and, one of the multiverses, maybe it's same. Right. And that strikes like a bad chord with Forrest, the, uh, the owner of the company. And uh, even at this point, I wasn't aware that he was the owner uh, necessarily. Like you could think he's a managerial type or, oh, that's or something. True. Right, like, right. We don't it, really know yet. Right. And um, it's not until we reach the end of the conversation and he invites Sergey to go to devs. And we, no one knows what devs is. Uh, I think this is the first mention of it at all in the show. Um, and from there, they take a walk towards uh, the devs building where essentially like they play a game at guessing what devs is to intrigue you even further. <laughs> yeah, right. um, you know, what do you, what do you think it possibly could be? And he's, it's not like Sergey's giving bad guesses necessarily on what, what he thinks like this super secret thing in this building, uh, very few people are in or out of and can't speak of and, uh, just guesses, uh, yeah. over and over. And, um, it's a very intriguing looking thing. I didn't, uh, I meant to kind of look more into maybe what those pylons like outside those golden pylons would be there for, unless it was just like, uh, Oh like a yeah. Sculpture I want to get kind of into that. Um, before, okay. to me, there was something interesting. Um, if you share my screen, I, oh, unfortunately sure. I thought, um, I thought this would let me just like go to the next image. I don't, it's, I don't see any way for me to just, <laughs> easily like just like flow through. through my so i'm gonna have to nice. sh share the screen every fucking time okay about that. yes yes um, this happens uh as they go to the forest yes. yeah yeah lily pack. sees out the window where she works she sees sergey uh working walking with forest towards uh devs uh but i think i don't know if it was right before that or after um she starts playing a game with one of her coworkers and yeah, they're, like, it, yeah. they're going, mm -hmm. they're naming off these numbers. Um, and then like you figure out that it's uh, the Fibonacci, Fibonacci sequence, sequence mm -hmm. um, which of course is like, you know, I think there's, uh, there's a lot of <laughs> maybe too much uh, importance put on it. Like people think it, it's like mm -hmm. this, you know the oh, pattern a, that the pattern yeah. that defines all of nature, and yeah, it's, as a, that's as been a, overblown. It's not necessarily true, but it does relate to the mm -hmm. golden ratio, and it yeah. creates this perfect spiral. Uh, it is fascinating, and it connects a lot of things in nature. Do uh, uh, reveal this pattern, right, 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 which I guess would you know could be viewed as deterministic. Like it's always going to sync up in some way with the it's inevitable right well um, and it's ever expanding you know it gets bigger right, it's and bigger and bigger to a point where like you would be engulfing like the galaxy kind of thing you know yes like, it's infinite but uh completely predictable right exactly you know so it obviously speaks to the themes of the show um mm -hmm. you know and it, i just thought it, it was a really cool uh little tie-in in that moment for mm -hmm. sure um god i wish and i could cycle through we that. actually see another thing which is uh so they go into the um we go into the devs building at last uh and oh, we're told oh. what it's made of or, or what the building is comprised of um which i i find out from just doing research on the set design and everything else so it's like uh there's a lead, uh, what do you say? 
Oh, it was lead something. Or I wrote it down to actually look up what it was, but I uh, can't find it from my notes here. A oh, lead, lead Faraday. Faraday oh, it's shield? a Faraday. It's a Faraday cage, which blocks okay. all uh, like wireless signal and. Yeah, yes, exactly. And then there's concrete, and then there's gold, gold plating, which is also supposed to uh, limit interference uh, from any outside things, because inside is nested a quantum computer. And these have to be basically an as uh, blank slate of an environment there can be. And there's even a vacuum surrounding Ooh. the um, the cube where everything is housed at. Um, Let me uh, hold on a second. I think I figured this out. Let me, uh, I'm going to stop that. Uh, I think I figured out a way to do this easier. I'm just going to go right into my folder here. Um, you got it? I think so. I'll add it in. Here we go. Uh, yeah. So here we have no. the. Hold uh, on. Hold on. <laughs> at least that, <laughs> that was the. Uh, that was the golden pylons of. Um, the golden pylons that are outside the front of the building, uh, and they have a mirror effect, and uh, it's kind of like uh, a little bit like Enter the Dragon, where like the mirrors reflect the mirrors, um, what's around them. Let's and see if I can uh, change this to be more useful, uh, God damn it! <laughs> well, as you figure, yeah, I, out, you know, it was like a, it was like a. I figured my image viewer would just let me do next image, next image. You would think, but yeah, it, it doesn't. It's not. I can't do it for some reason. Hmm. Um, but right, um, going into it now, I think on those pylons, uh, there's a number of scenes where you see them walk through and uh, sit in it. And it's almost like you feel like you're watching them through a golden lens. And since there's so much like golden value and everything going on with it, and I believe it's kind of what they always, whenever they boot up, um, like the uh, projector, projector in the in the devs building to look into um the past of the future like it does start out with a kind of this golden hue uh uh tone to it so i think it's a way of like always always kind of priming you visually for it um and at the same time it's almost like you're you're peering into another di like universe or something like you're looking at them in front of you but you're seeing them from the side, from behind, at the same time, uh, you know, the color mirror sort of effect uh, going on with it. And um, when they do get inside, we finally see the uh, Dev's Cube. Um, and okay. as soon as Rat figures out his image stuff here. <laughs> Sorry. Dude, I had you to it. It's just driving me insane. So I know. Okay, now I have it figured out. Because right. I do want to talk about these. Go for it. Now they're like. They're almost, uh, they're rectangular, um, gold. Mm -hmm. They almost, you know, kind of have the shape of like a monolith type yes. thing. Mm -hmm. um, I I was wondering if the, it, it, it reminded me of a graveyard. In a way, yeah, almost. it does. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm uh, almost in the back of my mind, I'm thinking, is one of these erected every time they have to take out somebody? For Ooh, this that project. would be interesting. That would be interesting. Would, yeah, I'm like, I'm curious if in the series, like, if one gets erected for Sergey, if there's any hint of that, oh. like, if one gets added, because it just there's something. Why are these here? They don't right. seem to serve any purpose. It could just be a aesthetic, but I don't think right. that's how this guy's mind works. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't know. I found that really. Here's a closer closer shot i'm hoping that this will just let me drop it right in the same screen did that work yes yep okay so that's a closer shot of what they look like and this is sergey um you know coming up to the building for the first time um yeah i'm very fascinated by these things and right. why they're there if it's just and, purely and aesthetic even, or not yeah even at night there's like wiring that's like lit like uh leading out to them and around them yeah, uh, and I was I was kind of curious like what that meant really, but we you will see um, Forrest who is uh, played by Nick Offerman there on the right. Uh, he will sit amongst these and kind of just like 
yeah. stare into the distance. And so I think it yeah, might be like- You know what, maybe me. when after what happens to Sergei happens, mm -hmm. I think one of the next scenes pretty close to it is him like really distraught yeah sitting there and i'm like this is what you do in a cemetery yeah you know and i, I don't know why that's why it made me feel that connection like maybe there's something to that um, so here we are in the vacuum chamber space uh they're in a floating uh transport it's the only way to get from the outside to the inside um which again is just to make sure that nothing gets in or out that they're not aware of and uh yeah, yes, it has to be completely by... protected from the outside world. Right. And of course, um, you know, it's one giant quantum computer. The whole thing right. is and, a quantum computer. <laughs> and uh, it's all held up electromagnetically is what they say. And the building itself, which is the structure on the right, is actually what is called a minger sponge. Ah, I um, got that. Yeah I, yeah, I had that info too. Um, and essentially, if uh, I, I watched a breakdown uh, online, uh, imagine if you took the Rubik's cube and you knocked out the middle piece on every side. Uh, so essentially, there's a hollow point running through the oh, X, Y, okay. the X, Y, and Z axis. And then imagine you took the blocks that are left over and you did the exact same thing. And then you took the blocks from that, oh, you did the exact same thing. It's a right. fractal pattern. Um, and essentially, if you did it infinitely you'd lose you'd have no volume but you'd be entirely surface area if you imagine all the planes in between it yeah um so it's supposed to be ever like again uh like the fibonacci sequence here we are from large to small and of course they actually made this whole set uh pretty much to function as one location there's uh there's not like several different sets that they did. This is all one spot that they filmed. It's so these from. this is one of the greatest achievements in any. I guess you know it's hard to quantify something as a television series anymore, but in any series I think ever created, this is one of the most impressive sets that's ever been oh, conceived. Look, it's stunning. Oh, it's so good. Yeah, it's beautiful. And again, when they're coming coming into this, the music, man, the Gregorian chant style mm -hmm. it's over the top spiritual like this is the new religion it's not it's mm -hmm. technology it's computational pure computation power it's spiritual right mm -hmm. and it's just so powerful entering this space for the first time and um so from here uh it is uh pretty much all, all that happens is uh, Sergey is just sat down and is told, uh, you'll figure it out. And uh, I, I thought it was, there's some line reads uh, that he does. Um, so, uh, what I have it? Uh, he says something along the lines of like, you'll figure it out. I know you will. And it's just like, it, it sounds like a, a way of like, I have confidence in you. But we come to find out that essentially because this thing can peer into the future, he already knows everything that's going to unfold. He's just waiting for yeah. it to happen. He's known the so, whole time. Yeah. So when he says, I know you will, it's it's kind of matter of factly as well. Right. Uh, and you wouldn't know that, you know, on your first run through watching. Uh, but it's just essentially like he's, he says it with almost like this heavy tone knowing exactly how things are going to unfold from here. Um, and again, where he's standing in the forest at the start of this episode, um, we, we come to find out he knows like the whole series of events that leads into the last episode of the series, yes. uh, at least on some level. Maybe Absolutely. not entirely. I think, I think entirely. Well, well, they didn't know uh, how at first when we're in this very staticky, uh, section of the, the prediction model, how Lily was going to die. They no, said, no, it, it literally can't see past that moment. Right. Well, it can't see past it, but like, uh, but essentially, and, oh, they don't know why nobody knows why. Yeah. And, um, they didn't know what was the importance of that whole thing, which is, is kind of in a way, I think their way of walking on the tram lines, so to speak on their own tram lines, um, letting this all happen. Moving well, 
I mean, this is kind of like, action. It goes to the uh, you know what comes first, the chicken or the egg? Mm -hmm. Are they? Is this happening this way because it's the only way it can, or is it happening because that's what they've been shown? So they're just following. Right, right. It's sort of like uh, the Tinkerbell. It. Yeah, it's sort of like Tinkerbell needs your belief in it to to actually exist or whatever. Um, yeah. It's, so this believing is where it in. Starts starts uh, messing with your head yeah like. yeah and um you know of course that's one of those things where i think on the outside you're able to um look into it and and think and no just I, I think from how many times something like that has been used as a plot device and that knowing your future knowing what was going to happen actually drives you into that destiny um like your your knowledge of it right and either you're explicit avoidance to not approach it leads you to it or you just so like uh oh well i die in five years well i'm not going to give a shit that that your carefree attitude about what was going to happen in that time interval sets you towards it or whatever it's it's like the uh the monkey yeah. paw sort of thing you know like you know now but you can't do anything to reverse it and it's probably your knowledge that might get you into that sort of thing yeah. Um, yeah, it's fascinating, man. And that's why watching it, when you watch it again, it's a completely, and, completely uh, different experience. And I love it because you're you're really paying attention to the expressions and nuances mm -hmm. of the and, characters that you know, know. <laughs> uh, so uh, still staying inside the cube because this shot is from what's to come. Yes. Um, okay, sorry. No, no worries. Uh, you, won't, I don't think you. Oh no, you're it. right. There is some shit. There is definitely some moments yeah. we need to so, touch on here. So Sergey is examining the code, and he comes to realize, um, and we don't even quite yet know fully what's going on. Um, Not but at essentially, all. essentially, he finds out this thing is doing what he was doing, except it does it for everything. It's a predictive model uh, simulation for you and everyone around you. Uh, and what he says, uh, he says it to the girl, um, uh, what's her name, Katie, uh, who comes up and talks to him. He's like, "Is this true? Uh, have you have you guys tested it? Do you have results?" Yes, there there are results. And but, he but says, at that point, if you're watching it for the, you still don't know what he's right, doing. right. But one of the things this line uh, kind of stood out to me is, uh, I, I don't know if it's word for word here, but it's pretty close. He, he says it changes everything. He, he says something like, "If this is correct, if this if that's if you guys have actual yes. results, it changes everything." Yeah. And she says, "No, if it's right, it changes nothing." <laughs> right. And and like it, it was just like one of those things, like wow, like yeah, this is really crazy. And he is uh, brought to vomiting over it because uh, essentially, it, it it's uh, and we'll see it actually in the speech that he has with. Um, forest as he leaves uh we find out that uh something's funny going on with his watch he's holding a very uh um uh very out out of place pose where his watch is always facing the screen uh yes. so we're led to think that there, t t is a spy and there's a whole interview process oh i, I can't believe we skipped over that uh interview prop process with the security guy keaton uh yes. who again I believe knows everything is going to happen. I don't uh, think so. I, oh, I'm going to I'm going to strongly disagree with you okay. there, and there will be uh, maybe not as we cover this episode, but certainly the next one. I I can pretty much assure, okay. like he he is not in the inner circle. He does not know. He he presses on the um his his being Russian, uh, and like the fact that this is an issue. Uh, and it does seem almost like he's he's got um, some sort of uh, prejudice withheld or, or held for foreign people in general or something. Uh, it, it definitely seems to speak to that. He uh, questions him and about his girlfriend and knowing that he can't talk to anybody. Uh, but again, everything is uh, moving through. But th that is something that was uh, pressed upon. And he's going to also appear uh very shortly in a big sequence yes. uh after after um sergey leaves the uh devs program and i was trying to really 
take uh, notice of things. It, I guess it all happens in a very quick sequence as far as him uh, reacting, messing with his watch, and then leaving. Because I looked at the time on the watch face, yeah. and it was, uh, I believe it was like 9.41.45 is what he moves it to to activate it or whatever. But we're, we're, we know it must be around that time. Right. Uh, and then uh, the security camera, cam camera footage that they had that they looked at the time again was at 945 is when he leaves the devs building according to what they have. But we know that's doctored, but we I have to believe it's mostly true up to that point, at least. Um, hmm. That he leaves that. I don't, yeah, I don't know. I mean, he would have had to spend more time uh, imaging the code. Maybe I, I mean it's hard Certainly, to know exactly whole, yeah. for espionage how long you would want to be holding you know like looking kind of out of place uh, when you've already sort of got eyes on you with uh, being the new yeah, guy. Yeah. Um, oh, but to the point of uh, him being in there, uh, they can't take anything in or out. Uh, at the same time, if you look at the set design, the keyboards and uh, trackpads and everything they use, they're like ingrained into the actual. Um, oh, like okay. furniture there, so I like it's meant to be like yeah. you can't you can't screw around with it. Right, uh, so right. even in the, in the design that they did on that, uh, like they paid attention to detail because they spoke with people about like, okay, if you had the most important like uh, thing in, in computing technology, how would you keep it under lock and key and in such a fashion? Uh, and essentially, that was the way to do it. Is uh, uh, the vacuum seal was part of it. Um, and also like all the, you know, lead shielding, concrete, all that, as far as signals out yeah. and, uh, also they can't have anything on them. So, and um, I, you know, I, his, the whole se sequence in the bathroom, um, mm -hmm. you know, his, the physical reaction of him vomiting. Um, I really, I'm not sure that he going into devs even though you know it's it's really laid out plain to stay that he is uh a spy industrial espionage right. like there's no question about that because of the mm -hmm. watch but I, I don't know that he knew going in that he was actually going to do it because oh. i really feel like they did a decent job showing that he has true authentic feelings uh for lily that mm -hmm. he, he has a life that he's actually uh, grown quite fond of. And so that you, maybe he deeply respects um, Forrest and, and all of that. I don't know that he knew he was going to follow through with okay. what his mission was. But upon the realization of what this quantum, giant quantum computer is doing, I think he, he felt no like he had to at that point because it was mm -hmm. it's so much power mm -hmm. that he felt like this is something the world has to know about yeah i think and, that was uh, part of his, his physical vomiting reaction was like right. realizing that he had to actually go through with this yeah i didn't i, I didn't come in with that take on it uh necessarily i thought it was just more him just like having his reality sort of crumble in a way uh yeah. you know like oh shit like i'm not the person i thought i was you know like i if, right. if you can predict me what does that make me you know but like an automaton in some sense i thought it was sure. like you make an even better point that like this is the realization um where whatever personal conflicts he has on regarding this whole thing that it's just major. Um, I didn't yeah. take that into consideration. Yeah, I don't know. It's just an thought. It might not be right at all, but that's, you know, it's something I kind of, it made me think about that. Like maybe he wasn't sure he was going to do it mm -hmm. until he realized what was happening. And they, then he felt he had no choice. And um, so I think that kind of covers his entry in there. Uh, so he leaves, um, he walks out into the dark. Yeah, uh, and, and you're I kind of like to, wondering. I like, did uh, want to bring up when he goes sure. out. I felt like um, the audio at the time when he's leaving the building actually made me. It made me think about the uh, 2001 Space Odyssey. Uh, the sounds with the monolith. 
okay. the sounds that were used in that film, like I feel like they were present in that sequence with him leaving, which is mm. I found pretty interesting. <laughs> mm. um, yeah, I mean, um, they really. I mean, it's almost like horror movie effect in a way. Uh, oh, the yeah. jump scare kind of element that they use with the audio. Yeah. Uh, and we just see him walk into the darkness. And I remember, I I can remember my feeling that when I first watched it, I'm like, dude, how the fuck is he going to find his way back? It's like <laughs> pitch black out there. And I also remember wondering what the hell those like uh, elements around the trees were. Right. And then we quickly see that they are the lighting elements, which... Um, you had shown there uh giving a halo <laughs> to our friend um forest yes. here uh and there's a shot that comes later on where it's actually like a upward angle it's literally um, a yeah perfect yeah. halo like yeah you can see and it's almost like a painting or yeah something. he's almost like a saint um or deity figure um and uh he goes on to uh, pretty much like knowing exactly what had happened. He calls his watch a James Bond watch. Uh, <laughs> he knows that he's done espionage. Uh, and he, he's basically saying, you know, it's okay. It's okay. Uh, I'm giving you forgiveness. Like he is, he is, uh, he's got godlike knowledge, right? This omniscience. He's yeah. been betrayed by him. I mean, it's almost like a, you know, Adam and Eve and God, you know, I, I, gave you the ability to do this and I knew you were going to do it the whole time. I never let on that. I knew I, but like, it's like, I knew you were going to betray me. Um, but not but only okay. that, he's, he's saying, on. how could there be anything but forgiveness? Because you didn't even right. have a choice. Right. Right. It's like, we're all in, you uh, were going to do this because you're hardwired to do it. Yeah. And, and um, not do it. So there's there's a lot that happens on the speech. Um, I was looking for some quotes before I came in here. I couldn't find it. Oh, it, this uh, is one of the, I, the I things. So he says, uh, you know, the world is godless and neutral, mm -hmm. and defined only by physical laws. Physical laws, yep. Uh, and then then he says, the life we lead, with all its apparent chaos, is actually a life on tram lines, mm -hmm. pre prescribed, undeviating. Mm -hmm. So this is where you really understand like this guy's worldview, uh, what he's tapped into, that basically choice is an illusion. It, yeah, we're basically a computer program just running mm -hmm. out our sequence, you know, and we and don't so have voices. He, he says, um, this is forgiveness. This is absolution. Um, you know, like he's speaking in like these, these, uh, like godlike, you know, your, your soul, um, kind of terms, like in, in the way that he's confronting him at this time. Uh, and he, I don't, he may have touched them, but he, he's not, uh, he, I think it's like, he sort of seems threatening, but he doesn't actually do anything. Um, and this is kind of where I think that maybe, uh, Keaton had been let in on the program because, Essentially, he lets him run right past him, but he runs right next to the tree that Keaton has. In, I mean, it could have been any one of them, but it's the yes. exact one. And you're just like, okay, so they knew this whole moment was coming. Um, and then uh, they suffocate him uh, with a bag. And and it's kind of like maybe speaking to your point where like uh, he was puking about having to do this. Like there was no sense of fight or self-defense on his part. So it, it's kind of like maybe he was just this promising whiz in Russia yeah. where they came to him saying, listen, you need, there's something going on here. How would you like to uh, make sure that, you know, we're not left in the dust, you know, kind of thing. And, you know, it's something that even um, Forrest brings up in the conversation. Like it was always going to be one side or the other that you had to betray. You couldn't help but pick the side you did right? Uh, based on your entire history, your upbringing, uh, everything else. Yes. And um, so and then, effect. right, cause and effect uh, was another one of those things that I have on this, because these will be repeated uh, throughout the show and, and one way or another are expanded upon. Um, and uh, this also had the musical cue. Uh, when the lights turn on, quick one. Then it, like, kind of went away. He, d he talks to him, and as he runs away, and Keaton tackles him and uh, suffocates him, like, the entire time. It's just 
building and ramping up. Uh, <laughs> and and uh, I can say uh, when I was first watching this and binging it, um, I don't think it was ex exactly that scene, but it was one of those scenes uh, where it had something like that. And my girlfriend was just doing her own thing off to the side, not really paying attention to the show. It was so like, like, like on like nails on a chalkboard kind of effect um, right. that she's like, oh, my God, this show is <laughs> it's driving me crazy. This this sound is driving me crazy. Like she had to like mute it uh, just to like not go insane. So like there is like a very strong emphasis on the, the sound design. Uh, and the audio that they put in here. And uh, that was definitely something I remember um, doing, uh, having, having remembered from rewatching it. Um, and w was there anything that you uh, remember from this that stands out from any of that? Well, again, it, what's kind of strange is, you know, of course I rewatched the episode to do this show. Mm -hmm. And again, like I said, in the beginning, you can't see it for the first time again. So right. it's difficult for me to, I have to try to tap into what I felt and thought the first time. And of course, at this point, you still have no idea what's actually going on. You don't know that the quantum computer is doing what it's doing mm -hmm. or the foreknowledge to all this. It still could, be, you could still conceivably believe that somehow they just knew he was, uh, stealing exactly it. and this was their reaction to that it, it's but you would you would be forward but it's yeah so off there but was you would think in conventional off. yeah you'd think in conventional ways you're like wait did he just wait in the fucking forest all night <laughs> for that guy to leave like exactly. uh, like if you didn't know yeah there, there was all those questions i think that would cloud your your way of viewing it um at that time it, and it, it um more unsettling like all of it just felt like i know something is is very off here mm -hmm. this shouldn't be happening this way it's almost like you just let this guy in and it seemed like you almost knew he was going to do it uh what is happening like i, I remember mm -hmm. just being and it just it it sucked me into the show so hardcore like you know, I just had to know what the what it was, what was happening. And now, um, I mean, unless you have anything you think more uh, that I didn't cover on this scene. Uh, I don't think so. Yeah. The next cut, I believe, goes to Lily waiting for him to show up. Yes. Uh, and he doesn't. But she's in bed and she's reading a book uh, that I wrote down called The Colossus. Yeah, uh, I was wondering. Yeah, did you have it? I meant to follow that up, but that was one of those things I left hanging on, on my own uh, research here. Yes. Yeah, so initially, when I tried to find the book, uh, I found the wrong. I just did the title. I found the wrong book, but uh, we'll get into that too. So this is a collection of poems from Sylvia P uh, Plath, mm -hmm. and uh, it was the only book of poems published uh, before her death of hers hmm. uh, which is just you know one of those interesting little factoids but um here there's a thing i've got to pull up this uh there was this analysis of it of the poem and mm -hmm. here's what it was just so fast and let me find this little i'm looking for this yeah little, uh, now while while you do that uh i can't help but notice like i was i was trying to like draw in any any obscure bits of information uh, so I'm even looking at like the stuff around their house um, everything like that and she uh, kind of like the um, what the hell is it called again the Minger sponge of the cube uh, there's there's a lot of like cubic elements and everything and like if you look at some of the uh, pillows and furniture and art like in her place like it does have like a lot of like cubic kind of elements to it and like looking at this cover you know just the the line linear aspect of it like I, i'm like they're always hitting on this um sort of thing at least around like the that design space that they had there yeah uh, for sure and i i don't know I, I i looked at their notes on that i was looking to see if there's deeper meaning i think they were just looking they said they designed her place to look like a lot of the up and coming like Silicon Valley people, like where, 
you know, Mark Zuckerberg got started out in like whatever area of San Francisco or whatever. So they took from that and they also just wanted to look more normal from the rest of the show, which was like supposed to be the, uh, you know, like the Apple Google space kind of thing, like open office. Yeah, uh, I didn't find, you know, I kind of, I was kind of doing the same thing. I didn't find anything um, of note really in the, uh, the mm -hmm. apartment. It just felt like. Yeah, nothing, nothing grand. I, I was yeah. just trying to like figure in cues as far as like across the board as design. But I noticed, um, I mean, they have the same guy, uh, Mark Digby, who was on Ex Machina. Uh, and I even noticed in that, that movie um it's very minimalist um kind of shots and stuff like it's not a lot of clutter there's not a lot of bells and whistles or jazz going on and they're all about uh doing practical effects they say that the majority of everything you see even the electromagnetic um transport thing is a practical effect oh, nice um nice. uh now there might have been like compositing, but yeah, they say like most of everything they they've done in the show is practical. That's um, beautiful, dude. So I so, love this guy, man. I love this creator. Yeah, and 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 that's something that they did even in Ex Machina, like which was crazy to think about. Uh, yeah. was just how much of how little of it was like all CG, um, for it. Um, so did you find the uh yeah the well here? okay so the the book is called the colossus and the uh it's titled after the a poem in the book uh -huh. and, and listen to this <laughs> this blew my mind uh a poem commonly considered to be about plas deceased father the colossus is addressed to an unspecified listener who exists as a huge statue <laughs> damn how badass is that now here's here's another interesting uh i i don't know i there's no way that this is coincidental so when i first tried to locate um the colossus i you know i of course i just typed in colossus and this was the first one that came up now mm -hmm. this is a book uh colossus is a 1966 science fiction novel by british author uh, Dennis uh, Feltham. Uh, it's about a super com supercomputers taking control of man mankind. <laughs> All so right. You can't tell me, you can't tell me that that wasn't also, and even though it wasn't this specific book, mm -hmm. you can't tell me that he he wasn't like. It's a reference to both books to me. I mean, how could it not be? I mean, it, it could be coincidental, but I, I do know that, um, you know, uh, Garland has a very high respect for, I, I guess, these ideas. Like, uh, yeah, I, mean, I, I don't know. It's a, to me. OK, so the poem is about the giant statue aspect. And then there just happens to be another book called Colossus, mm -hmm. which was, I mean, again, written in 66. I'm mm -hmm. impressed, first of all, by this guy being able to write a book about a supercomputer taking over mankind in 66. That's kind of impressive. Um, but that that just seems too, it's too over the top, not for there to be like an intentional nod going on there. Uh huh. And so, um, I mean, those are cool little factoids. And I'm, this is all just, I swear, guys, like maybe five seconds of, of a thing we just yeah, like, it is. talked about. Um, <laughs> it's just a book she's reading. She sets down. And she's just noticing the time. Uh, she calls up her friend, uh, you know, being like, Sergey's not home. This is really weird. And, you know, she says, well, it's, it's the devs team. Um, I'm sure he's just, you know, like sinking his teeth into it, something like that. Uh, don't worry. I'm sure he'll show up. Uh, but this is kind of the first introduction we have into this notion. Um, and maybe it's a bit like um, like new age um, kind of thing, but like knowing somebody, knowing knowing like inherently, like you're instinctually something's off. you you don't know why, but something inside of you it, is computing all this information is a saying like, no, no, this isn't 
this isn't right. Something is off right yes. now. This isn't just a, and they play with this a number of times. Uh, yeah. The series, but this is the first kind of drop of it. It's like, no, he would be back. He would have texted me. He would have called me. Uh, yes. He would have, I would know. I would know. It's, it's almost like, again, it's these constant nods to, you know, how does the quantum computer do what it does? How does it be mm -hmm. the future at all? Well, it's because it's, it's taking all available data of what's happened before mm -hmm. and is able to project that into the future um, with almost insane accuracy. And she's, mm -hmm. she's actually doing the same thing because she's mm -hmm. taking all knowledge of this man she knows, right? Mm -hmm. All his past behaviors. And she's predicting that this something is very wrong because he, this is not how he would, Right. Would behave this way, and so like it's, it's, it's giving us cues that even as right. humans are doing this all the time on a smaller level, we do it all the time. And then we are dropped into, I think, the next morning. Uh, she wakes up; he's still not there, and she knows something's really wrong. Right. Uh, after that point, she meets up with Keaton, the head of security, and um, with. A really good, uh, not, I don't know what's going on. Let's investigate. <laughs> Even though he just killed this guy uh, hours hours ago. Um, he looks at the security camera, uh, security camera footage, and uh, we know that something's amiss. We have him just walking across the campus over uh, from, I believe, their timestamps. It was about like 30, 40 minutes, um, kind of wandering aim aimlessly. Uh, but like with a purposeful walk, um, which is what she says uh, in the end. It's like, no, you, it was really weird. It's like he had a purpose, but he was a zombie um, at the same time. Um, when I she found that to be a very about. odd line. Uh, in a way, but it was kind of like, I think she was saying it was like uh, the actions didn't match with anything as far as thought goes. Like there, there didn't seem to be a great yeah. design to it. And yet, you know, if somebody was just wandering, like they have a more meandering, they stop, they stare, they look around. Whereas like with him, like everything that they had to look at, it looked like he was trying to go somewhere to do something, Yeah. but you couldn't make out anything from, from it beyond that. You know, it yeah, was just kind of yeah. like a guy in motion sort of thing. <laughs> um, and uh, we also see Forrest, uh, you know, play into it as well. Um, into this whole game of not knowing and at the same time we don't know at this point but he knows that she has a very important role to play in his own future and the future of devs and the future of everything um he just doesn't know exactly what it what what's the after point of it uh so it's sort of like he's always um as much as he seems to have this godlike power he's also beholden to it as well and he has to submit himself before it he he believes he's on this tram line he can't get off and yeah. uh that's kind of like his defining characteristic um going through it through it all um so they contact the police and uh move forward uh with a investigation quote unquote um and she still thinks that something's wrong and that this footage wasn't actually Sergey, uh, on some level, like it just made no sense to her. And again, like it, they're really hammering on the person, like somebody knowing somebody, um, which follows up with uh, her meeting up with their ex. Um, is his name Jamie? I think that I, uh, I can't remember his name. I'd have to look that up, but I, I can't remember his name for some. Uh, but this is all because she still thinks it's really weird. Um, I, I'm skipping over the fact she goes back. Uh, finds a phone to basically put all of his data onto as a cloud re-upload and finds a Sudoku app, uh, which, again, knowing him, knowing he hates Sudoku, why would this be on there? And she tries to get into it. It's password protected. And then she finds out for every wrong entry she, she inputs, it is going to delete itself uh, after three times. Um and so she knows something is more amiss. So she finds this guy uh, that was her ex and uh, 
uh, seeks his help into finding out what happened and wants him to break into the phone of uh, Sergey and find out just what is behind this Sudoku app. Yes, and uh, yeah, it's a pretty fascinating exchange between them. It gives us a lot of insight into the character. Um, mm -hmm. And I, you know, I thought it was interesting that, you know, this is on, uh, what is it? The, the Castro district in San Francisco. I think it's the Twin Peaks bar, which, you know, I poked around a little bit trying to find a connection with Twin Peaks. And um, I just think it was a nice little nod to Lynch. Mm -hmm. um, but the design of the, this bar, it has uh, glittering strings of lights uh, in the windows and such, mm -hmm. which is very, you know, it's very reminiscent of the interior of the devs building, um, this bar, it, you know, right. it, it has, it gives that effect. Um, so Oops, I think sorry. that was pretty interesting. Uh, you know, again, just more, more little nods, little attention, like the blurring of reality with, uh, the quantum computer environment, it, you right. know, it's giving you hints and nods that that they're interconnected. Right. And, uh, you know, like I said, like every time I look at these establishing shots, um, like I, I feel like, man, they did something to really make this look like it's a miniature. And there is kind of like this glittering effect as like because a lot of the shots are um, like the sun is positioned just right so that every window they go across like glimmers. Yes. You know, and shines and it's also like a golden hue as well. Like I mean they, they really like did a great job on the uh cinematography and uh everything that they captured uh to make it look like it was more of like that devs building that we see. Uh it just always kind of ties back into it. Yeah. I love when she approaches right the moment he sees her. He mm -hmm. I think he says, Oh shit. He says, "Oh no," or something like that. And it's like, <laughs> yeah, uh, he know it's a he. He knows her again. It's exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. He, he has all this collected, and this speaks to uh, like social, this social media time we live in, where all mm -hmm. this data is collected on everybody, like mm -hmm. all of this shit, and it's like understanding that if you have enough data on somebody's past behavior. You can literally predict their future behavior. This is the even, you know, ongoing theme of the show. And it's like, yeah, it's so, we have to be so aware of this. Like, well, they even have, like, uh, I'm sure you've heard about, like, the Target incident where, like, they sent, like, a coupon to this girl um, for, like, uh, diapers or prenatal uh, or drugs and stuff, or, like, you know, uh, yeah. vitamins and everything. And, the dad of the girl got like pissed off. He was like, why are you sending these coupons to my daughter? And then it turned out based on the items she had bought, like in whatever time frame, the past two months or whatever, they yeah. found out that women got pregnant, were pregnant and like so many of them or something. And that there was actually like data that correlated with it. And they, he comes to find out she is pregnant at that yep. time, like and like apologizes to the target people. <laughs> Why would you um, apologize? You know, it's even more you know like he, I think his exact words or something was like, "There's more going on than I knew at my house" or something like that. Um, so yeah, there is something about that predictive element, um, but there's also uh, like the moment he sees her. This is probably going to yeah, end badly but, for me. But in this scene, as they're talking, um, he talks about you know, their history and what sort of happened where uh, she had gone to the Amaya um, uh, workplace and he thought, oh, that's great. You're moving on. Uh, but I guess you were moving on from me as well. And there's sort of this discussion where it's like, as, as well as he knows her, like maybe he didn't quite know for himself where he stood with her. And, and uh, I remember and what I was looking up, I wish I wrote it down, but I didn't. Uh, when I was going through the whole um, uh, audio and everything, there's a song playing in this in the background, and it had something to do with like a relationship um, 
you know, and finding out, uh, like, there was more at play than you thought at the beginning or whatever. So it's kind of like him uh, talking his way into knowing, like, he loved her way more than she loved him back. Right. Uh, in the end. And, uh, you know, yeah, struggling with just, that. She just, she, uh, when she left, he just never heard from her again in like two right. days. Like, and he, he, this was like the one for him. Mm -hmm. And she just walked away, not a, hasn't heard anything from her in all this time. It's like, it really, it tells you a lot about her and how her, how she functions. Well, and there's the part where um, she has the phone call with her mother and like, uh, you know, it feels a strange oh. her conversation with the mother. And then, then she's like, oh, all well, my friends would take care of me. Yeah. In fact, they're uh, here right now and there's nobody. There's yeah. literally nobody in the room. Dude, I just had a thought about that with uh, her ex and why the thing about her that could be so integral and important that makes her different than other people. He, her unpredictability, like his, mm -hmm. his inability to know where he stood with her. Like the fact mm -hmm. that all, he was just like, do, she just leaves and he never hears from her again. And, and he thought she was like an integral part of his life. It's like mm -hmm. there's something about her that is, uh, can't be predicted. Yeah, um, I mean, they certainly an important part of this whole storyline. They certainly gave her like other qualities um, where she kind of stands out from most everyone else. Uh, when um, eventually she convinces this guy to to crack into it, and she actually like responds to no, that's episode two, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you want to save that, we can save that. But I mean, oh yeah, we gotta save. That. You, you, you find out she's willing to take risks that most sane people wouldn't do. Yes, <laughs> yeah. Um, so uh, this scene uh, ends with him like walking out because she asked him to break into uh, her ex her new boyfriend's phone, uh, and he's like, "Wait, so you you <laughs> want?" to come back to me after two years of no talking and just leaving me to ask me to get into your boyfriend's phone. <laughs> and he's like, go fuck yourself. Yeah. yeah. Um, and uh, that's kind of where that ends. And I believe if I remember right, um, because I, I, I'm more intrigued by the, like, I guess the more um, existential and philosophical elements of the show. Then, I mean, there, there's so much going on about, industrial espionage, um, uh, security. And, uh, we, we have a mention of, um, uh, for, it was the whole reason why, uh, Forrest drops by when, uh, Lily's talking to Keaton about Sergey missing is that there's an important guest coming, which is going to be, uh, I believe it's a Senator, U S Senator, uh, as they investigate, um, you know, the devs program and the quantum computer and just how, much of a risk it is even to the united states that this thing exists and it's not within their control right um or knowledge because it's that locked down and um that's that's just starting to be planted uh in the series but they they mention it offhand but it, it plays out more in the future of the, the show um and i believe after this scene she uh is brought back they, uh, there's the interlude or potentially, I think where they, there's a nighttime shot of the statue. Was it in this episode? And I can't, I'm after this scene. I can't, I can't recall. I know it. I know it ends with, uh, her watching the footage of Sergei, uh, immolating himself. Um, so he, he stands at the foot of this giant, freaking statue <laughs> at the is uh, that in episode one that is episode one it ends there okay. uh this is where it ends uh okay. she's watching the footage um you know they bring her there we have something to show you uh and she's watching this footage where he emulates himself uh she then uh leaves before like at, as he collapses uh on the footage and she runs over to where this physical site is and sees the charred body of Sergei. 
and that is like right where it ends. The foot of uh, the Amaya statue. Yeah, yeah, and um, uh, there was an interesting thing while I was looking this up and trying to find stuff. Um, there's a theory that, or, or at least like a, a notion, because we, we're dealing with like the messianic, uh, tech mogul, uh, and godlike things, and you, you had that whole scene where you know I forgive you. Um, and everything like that, that this could be like, the, like in a, another context, like a sacrifice, mm. or like a, a human oh, sacrifice right. to bring about, you know, the statue of, uh, the girl, um, bring yeah, her I back to life. That. Right, right. That's interesting. So, yeah. I don't, um, I, I don't know. I'd have to think about that. I don't know that it, I mean, I'm not sure it connects with the way Forrest thinks um no not necessarily I, really, I, I think as an, an imagery and uh you know there he's certainly always playing with the idea yeah uh, you know garland is um you know i i think that even when it came to those um from what i i was listening to uh, a interview with mark digby who did the the designs um you know essentially they found that location uh it's uh i I think it's like University of Santa Cruz or something like that, and it's like a library. And yeah. That's where they do all the outside shots of the uh, Amaya complex there, and it's surrounded by that forest. And they're just like, well, the Dev's thing's going to be the separate thing away from everything else. Uh, and they go through the forest, and like it was more like a practical problem. How do we um, illuminate this at night? How do we do this so it, it looks kind of um, futuristic, but not over the top and yeah. like that that simple halo thing uh actually like they started you know shooting scenes and they're like it, it was just like serendipitous like it wasn't i don't believe it was anything mapped out completely to that level i could possibly but it just, believe that yeah it just happened to line up or like, you well, know this is this is depends on if your worldview is uh deterministic or not <laughs> right right <laughs> Um, but I, I love the halo tree lighting, the way it, oh, uh, yeah. you know, it was just darkness above the halos. Oh, that too. The yeah, light. yeah, dude. It was it looks so goddamn fucking hot, man. Yeah, it did look great. Um, you know, and that's that's one of the things that I've always found uh, awesome about his movies. I, I'd say maybe a little less on Annihilation just because it was uh, so... Um, I, I feel like it was the most CG heavy one you know with the whole prisms of light and uh uh all the all the sporadic um evolutions that they would have no going on no other way to achieve it well right but i i'm just saying like i i i love the grounded feel of no, like I ex machina do. I do. and 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 just the fact that like it's it's not overly complex but there's so much going on inside of it you know like yeah, there's the that cube, but it's a cube within the cube within a cube. You know, so good, dude. thing. Dev's building is it's it it's a character in in the series. It might not be the most important character, but it it is its own character. It lives and breathes. It's it's integral. It's so beautiful. Every time anything happens there, it I'm just it's captivating. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, I love it, dude. So um, I guess, is there anything else you want to hit on? I feel like I kind of. Uh, no, I think with this yeah. this episode, I think we hit on, you know, all the major highlights and delved into a lot of, you know, um, I, I did find this, this kind of sh shocked me. Um, this is the actress that plays Lily. Uh, she was uh, Kyoko in Ex Machina. She yeah, it's the, like. Um, yeah, that totally threw me because I didn't know that either. And like, <laughs> yeah. you just can't see it. And then I'm yeah. like, oh, wow, damn. Um, grow your hair back. <laughs> Please. <laughs> Please. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, I guess that's where uh, we'll leave it for right now. And we will talk. Um, you know, I, I watched episode one and two, not knowing how far we'd get today. Uh, we went, we're at an hour and 20 minutes right about now. Yeah. Um, longer, much but, longer than the episode itself. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, um, you know, looking at episode two, I didn't think there was quite as much 
heavy material to go on. I don't think so either. I watched yeah. that episode too. Um, I think from from this, like next Wednesday, I think we'll be able to do like um, probably two episodes, maybe even mm-hmm. three. You know, we'll, we'll see. We'll see. Yeah. Yeah. I have to remind myself exactly everything that happens. Um, but yeah, just rewatching that one, I was like, man, there's a lot less for me to really uh, remark upon here. Um, it's just kind of uh, expanding on some stuff, hitting a few more things and moving the plot forward uh, more than like big themes or introductions. Uh, a lot of that is right here at the front. Oh, it's so um, packed. It's so but dense. I believe episode two is where we actually see the machine up and running and we finally yeah. have an idea of what exactly is going on. Because up to Correct. this point, it's all been presented to you as code. You know there's a quantum computer and you know that whatever it is uh, really fucked with Sergey's head. <laughs> you know his realization and the yeah, fact that considering everyone... what he was presenting... Um with his, Mm -hmm. you know, what got him, you supposedly got him the job. It's like, it must be at a level that for even a guy who's thinking on that level Mm -hmm. tweaked his mind. Right. Uh, And uh, the fact that uh, it's mainly the girl, Katie, uh, you know, like she just seems resolved uh, to like this, this fate of the whole machine. It's almost like everyone that touches it, um sort of just loses a part of their humanity just by knowing that it exists um and uh she she's the one who you know he talks to and says uh you know do you have test results and she says uh yes and he says it changes everything she says no it changes nothing by <laughs> what it is, you know uh and and you come to find out she's very um pretty much pregmatic and uh, straightforward about the whole process. And uh, she doesn't, everything. she has the same level, if not more resolve than Forrest, but doesn't mm-hmm. have the emotional drive, like driving force for. Right. Exactly. It's like, man, she's just a true believer, man. Well, and it's like, funny. Like we'll, we'll get into it as a cult. Like she's, she's like, Ooh, she there definitely seemed to be a different side to her before she was involved on the project uh as we'll see like in one of the other episodes um but yeah uh there is uh more to come on this whole thing i don't know how much we're going to cover in the next episode because i can't really remember episode three all that much oh yeah Uh, you know you know i'm gonna be watching these as we go i think we'll get through at least two episodes next time and i i did want to say too like it's very clear, you know, most uh, show, quote unquote, shows, uh, I feel like there's, you know, a pitch pilot, there's a pilot episode, and, mm-hmm. and then they're hoping that it'll get picked up and turned mm-hmm. into us. And I feel like, and this is, uh, I think the level of respect that Alex Garland has achieved at this point with his track record, mm-hmm. I don't think that, I don't think that happened with this. I think Alex Garland uh, said, I want to make uh, this series. Mm-hmm. And they said, uh, here's a stack of money, do it. Because this did oh. not, this isn't a, I don't think this was a pilot episode situation. I think. No, I, I don't think it could have been. Out yeah. of the gate, he was getting to make his story start to finish. And that's that. Mm-hmm. And I well, think and it's, it, it's, it's, limited- it's a nod to how good this fucking guy is, people. It- it's a limited series. Uh, you know, it's not like it's going to go ad infinitum. It's not, there's, there's not going to be a devs to, um, no, absolutely you not. know, That's yeah. another, I love, you know, I don't, you know, some things are great. Like they keep going fine, but you know, real value to me in storytelling is that there is a beginning and end. That's where you, mm-hmm. there's so much power in that. Right. And, um, yeah, I think that, uh, even when I watched Ex Machina, I was like, oh man, you know, there's there's conversations that happen within like the span of one minute on that sh- <laughs> on that that could take up a whole show, you know, like if you really got into it. Um, that is one of the, it's oh my god, that movie was so good. It's by yeah. far it, probably the most compelling movie on AI ever made. Like, um, and I found it horrifying. I've talked to 
there was somebody who's a big horror fan. And he's like, it wasn't scary at all. And I'm like, what the? Did you watch <laughs> what I watched? Are you fucking yeah. Me? Part of my um, part of my uh, research today, I w watched like an interview he had with some guy. Um, I can't remember his name, but this dude talks to. I, I think he's an AI himself, um, and he talks to a number of like really smart people uh you know like richard dawkins um i mean i mean like like actual intellectuals yeah uh, and he had alex garland on and just talked about his movies and um you know it the, unfortunately i was looking for more talks about devs and and everything that shows up in it and i think it's just still kind of considered just out there yeah um like there's pre press release stuff where they you know they're promoing it and they don't want to talk about anything yeah uh, and it it's yet to be like um i'm gonna try to see if i can't hunt down anything as far as like almost commentary i didn't i saw that there was a thing on hulu for extras but i didn't actually click on it yeah and i imagine it's just like five minute this is how we did this uh kind yeah. of thing that that won't give me much of anything i would like no. to have like a that full for full audio commentary and i'll even look to see if there's ever going to be like a blue blu-ray release um of the show um down the pipeline i'm not sure if that's something that's going to happen or not uh you know considering most things are uh, all like subscription based now but right um yeah i think that's a good place to end it here uh any final thoughts from you no uh just I, you know i hope people engage it this is a really special creation and uh i'm, I'm looking forward to it gives me this great chance to and reason to revisit it and uh you know, take a closer look at it. So this was yeah. fun. Yeah, this is a good first episode. We'll catch you again next week. Same bat time, same bat channel. Uh, like, comment, subscribe, and uh, we'll see you next week, guys. Take care.